In August of 1996, Osama bin Laden declared war on the United States. He literally issued something he called a declaration of war against the Americans. By that point, U.S. authorities considered bin Laden responsible for a hotel bomb in Yemen in 1992. That was apparently targeting U.S. troops, but it killed two tourists instead. Authorities in Saudi Arabia also considered bin Laden responsible by then for another bombing in 1995, targeting a U.S. military training facility in Saudi Arabia. That bomb killed seven people. So in 1996 comes bin Laden's declaration of war. Two years later, in 1998, he issues another anti-American declaration, this one saying that all Muslims anywhere in the world have it as a duty to attack Americans. Later that year, on August 7th, 1998, bin Laden bombs went off at the U.S. embassies in Kenya and Tanzania, wounding thousands of people and killing more than 200. Then two years after that, the bombing of the USS Cole killed 17 American sailors. By the time the September 11th attacks happened, Osama bin Laden had a big resume of terror attacks attributed to him, in addition to years and years and years of financing terrorism and terrorist networks. That was all before September 11th. But what about after September 11th? Since September 11th, the story of terrorism targeting the United States itself has mostly, thankfully, been the story of thwarted attacks, starting with the would-be shoe bomber, Richard Reed. That was just about three months after 9-11. There was also Najibul Lazazi, the would-be New York City subway bomber. There was also the would-be underwear bomber, Umar Farouk Abdul Muttalib, and the would-be Times Square bomber, Faisal Shehzad. Also the would-be Dallas bomber, Khalid Ali al-Dasari, who among other targets allegedly wanted to bomb former President Bush's Texas home. And then there was the mass casualty shooting at Fort Hood in Texas in 2009, carried out by Major Nidal Hassan. It was also the campaign of terror known as the D.C. sniper attacks. John Allen Muhammad, along with teenager Lee Malvo, killed 10 people in the D.C. area in 2002. The bloodiest large-scale ter large terrorist attacks since 9-11 have actually been abroad. In 2002, a series of coordinated bombings in Bali killed more than 200 people. In 2004, 191 people killed in coordinated bombings of trains in Madrid. In 2004, Chechen terrorists took over a school in Beslan, Russia. By the end of that, they had killed 334 people, including 186 children. In 2005, more than 50 people killed in coordinated bombings of London's public transit system. In 2008, 164 people killed in coordinated attacks in Mumbai, India. But what about bin Laden? What about bin Laden specifically? What about him? Of the major post-9-11 attacks and planned attacks that we know of, only one of them has publicly and officially been attributed to planning by Osama bin Laden himself. Only one of them has been said by U.S. officials to have been even conceivably based on instructions from bin Laden. That was the attempted plot last year for Mumbai-style attacks in Europe, coordinated attacks in England, France, and Germany. That's the one thwarted post-9-11 incident that officials have even asserted, as far as we can tell, uh, as directly linked to Osama bin Laden, which is good news and bad news. I mean, Al-Qaeda central under bin Laden getting only to the planning stages of one major terrorist attack after 9-11 and not being able to pull it off, that is a good news story. The bad news, of course, is that all of those terrorist attacks and attempted terrorist attacks that I listed in the rest of this segment, some of them were al-Qaeda sponsored, some of them weren't, some of them were al-Qaeda inspired, and some of them weren't. But they all happened without Osama bin Laden's direct involvement. So how much will wiping him off the map make a difference in diminishing the terrorist threat both here and in other countries? This is a hard question, uh, but one whose answer, it turns out, uh, may be quite different now. Uh, than it would have been had the killing of Osama bin Laden happened just a few months ago. I will explain the temporal importance of that when we come back. It may be a mark of how hated he was. Within hours of the announcement of Osama bin Laden's death, international congratulations poured in. Afghan President Hamid Karzai, who rules where bin Laden launched the 9-11 attacks, said al-Qaeda has murdered and harmed our people for many years. I hope terrorism will meet its fate with the killing of bin Laden. Yemen, bin Laden's ancestral homeland, welcomed the American covert action and encouraged more of them. A Yemeni official said, we hope that targeted measures will be taken to end terrorism throughout the world. 
NBC's Richard Engel reporting on how the news of Osama bin Laden's demise resonated around the Muslim world today. Joining us now is Ayman Moyaldeen. He's Middle East correspondent for Al Jazeera English. Ayman, thanks very much for your time tonight. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. What do you think that, um, what do you think that Americans should try to understand about how the bin Laden news is resonating around the world, uh, particularly in the Middle East, as opposed to how it may be resonating here? Well, I think there's uh, two very important factors that uh, Americans really should look at. One is the symbolism of Osama bin Laden, how important uh, this type of operation was uh, in striking really a blow to uh, the symbolic nature of al-Qaeda and that ideology. Uh, and more importantly, it's also important to keep in mind uh, that the Islamic world, as it's sometimes referred to here, is not a monolithic entity. What affects Muslims in Indonesia is not necessarily the same as that which affects Muslims in Nigeria or Turkey. And sometimes what tends to happen is an oversimplification. Uh, to say that this ideology is widespread, is endemic, and is certainly uh, one that enjoys a great deal of support. Keep in mind uh, that Muslims for many years, and particularly those in the Arab world who have suffered a lot of the uh, violent extremism of Osama bin Laden, have denounced him and have rejected him. And more recently, we have seen that denunciation uh, throughout the Arab revolutions that have been taking place. In terms of the, his symbolic nature, as you were describing, how much of his symbolic importance and of al-Qaeda's symbolic importance was rooted in the sense that he couldn't be caught, that uh, for 10 years since 9-11, he had been able to evade what amounted to the, the largest manhunt in international history. Was that a, a, his, his sort of perceived invincibility? Was that part of his symbolic importance? Well, there's no doubt that uh, the ability, and we'll certainly learn more about this in the coming months and perhaps years, how he was able to uh, uh, remain out of the reach of the United States and other allies uh, is going to be, or is going to become clear in the coming months or years. But I think what's more important here, certainly uh, in terms of understanding his symbolic significance, uh, is that he is an individual who represented an ideology which, although advocated and used very inappropriate means uh, to justify his actions, uh, unfortunately there are those who supported uh, and tried actually to expand that ideology. But nonetheless, it was one that uh, not everyone in the Islamic world or in the Arab world accepted. The symbolism of uh, taking out Osama bin Laden is really the message that is being delivered to the next person that's coming in line, not necessarily to his supporters, uh, but to al-Qaeda in the sense that if there is indeed somebody who now emerges as a operational and symbolic figurehead for this organization, he can rest assured that he would also be a target of the United States and others. And that in itself uh, is a very, very uh, strong ideological blow to the organization. Do you, th uh, to that end, I hear what you're saying about the sort, if, if not the deterrence effect, at least the idea that the perceived certainty of punishment, that you will have things catch up with you, uh, may change people's calculation about this may change their sense of whether or not what they're doing is heroic. Um, and because of that, there is sort of this looming question about Pakistan here, about the fact that, Obama, uh, that, that Osama bin Laden was found not in some lawless, ungoverned area, but relatively close to Pakistan's capital city uh, in a place that's uh, full of former military officials and quite near uh, Pakistan's military academy. Is Pakistan in a tough spot in terms of seeming uh, potentially complicit in the hiding of Osama bin Laden, but not having facilitated uh, this, this action in a way that they have other arrests? Well, there's no doubt that Pakistan finds itself in an almost lose-lose situation. If on one hand uh, we are going to take Pakistani officials' words uh, for value, that they knew about the operation or that they had the intelligence or certainly cooperated with the United States, then there's no doubt that that has put them in the same boat with the United States in becoming a target for perhaps future al-Qaeda attacks. So that is one problem from the Pakistani perspective. The other problem is if they did not know about this operation, if they did not know about the intelligence that led to this operation, then it undermines Pakistan's sovereignty and understands, I'm sorry, undermines the sovereignty of this current Pakistani government uh, in that it allowed a Western country to completely violate its airspace, carry out this military operation. So the Pakistani government finds itself in a difficult position in either scenario or in either narrative it decides to adopt. Now, one thing also to keep in mind, uh, not to pay too much attention to 
where Osama bin Laden was and how close he was to Islamabad, because certainly we'll learn more about the intelligence. But keep in mind uh, that throughout the course of histories, identifying people has been very difficult. In the United States, uh, tracking down the Unabomber took several years, and he was here in the United States with the FBI and other intelligence agencies pursuing him. So uh, it's not necessarily indicative that Pakistan knew where Osama bin Laden was uh, and did not enough to uh, bring him to justice. Uh, but we are going to learn more about that, just a point to keep in mind. Although I would say with the Unabomber, because he was found in, the, in like the, the, the back end of nowhere in Montana, it raised fewer <laughs> questions than if he'd been found like in a nice house in Nyack. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, well, absolutely, absolutely. Well, now, there's going to be a lot of tough questions to be answered by Pakistani officials, but certainly one not to jump to conclusions in terms of what role they may have played or may not have played. Absolutely. It's a point well taken. I'm in Moyal Dean, uh, Middle East correspondent for Al Jazeera English. It's always really nice to have you here, Ayman. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rachel. All right.